Welcome to the swamp, the giant that the head ball coach awakened, one that thrived in urban renewal, and now one where only the Gators get out alive. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see the number nine team in the country, the LSU Tigers taking on another SEC rival, the Florida Gators. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me. Guys, it's time to get it going. LSU will put a foot to it for the opening kickoff. He'll start the return inside his five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So Florida's offense takes the field for the first time today. And the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive in games like this, guys. And it's crucial to get your emotions under control. No doubt. In rivalry games, you've got to limit the mental errors and you've got to limit the penalties because those will kill you, Bob. And you've got to come out under control. It means so much. We know that. The fans are all talking about it. But it's just football. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. Trying play action. Fires to the right. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have squeezed it. The biggest lie college football coaches tell is nameless, faceless opponent. David, game like this, you know their name and you know their face. <laughs> you know them well, and it does mean just a little bit more because it's bragging rights. Like, the rivalries matter so much. All throughout the year, all the fans talking about this game in particular, that's why it means more, and that's why these players will be jacked out of their minds. They pick up the first down on the drag route. I know that seems like a simple route, but it's actually a lot more complex than what it looks like because that route changes based on whether it's man or zone. If it's man coverage, he's flying across the field. If it's zone, he's got to sit down over the ball in a soft spot, giving his quarterback a place to go with it. Nice job of those guys being on the same page there. And he is swarmed under a host of defenders there to make the stop. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job by the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. The handoff to Johnson. You want to make sure to maximize those types of runs, and he gets it out to the 41. I think he run that play on second down knowing it's going to make third down easy. You're not trying to hit a home run. You don't need the big play right now. Now you know third down, everything's on the table. Everything's available. High success rate. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. They'll try to power their way ahead. They thought they could just run it on third and short, but this defense was there to make the stop. Great team defense on that one play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. And the Gators will call on their punt team. Getting our first look of the afternoon at the punter. He'll bring it back. It's Thomas. Was looking for more running room, but found nothing but more tacklers. He's down at the 24. The Tigers' offense will try to get something started with their first possession. This matchup on the outside, Jesse, a big play weapon for the offense, a shutdown corner for the D. They say big-time players make big plays in big games, so who gets the best of this matchup? That's going to determine the game. Yeah, I mean, such a fun chess match. How much are they on each other during the game, the head-to-head -head matchup that everybody wants to see? This slot receiver gives defensive coordinators nightmares. You have got to double him virtually on every pass play. He better have safety help over top. Otherwise, this guy's a threat to score every time they throw the ball. Scanning the field, it's Nussmeyer. Lofts one high and deep. Catch inside the 25. And he strides his way into the end zone. Touchdown, LSU! 
And it feels good to land that first big punch against a rival, doesn't it? No doubt. In a game like this, too, you just want to be executing at a high level early. So, David, that's got to feel great getting on the board first. And settles everyone down. All the nerves, all the emotion of this rivalry game. Now everybody can kind of settle in because you know you already got a touchdown on the board. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. What a display of explosive capabilities on that drive. 75 yards, two plays, and a touchdown. Kickoff team has the ball teed up, and they're about ready to go. He'll bring it out. It's Hawkins. They drag him down at the 22. He gambled for the big return out of the end zone and came up a little short. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Dances away to buy time. He'll pull it down. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. Well, for this defense now, being good against the pass is not just going to be in the back end covering people. It's going to be trying to contain this guy at the quarterback position. He is lethal, especially when things go off script. And you saw it on that one. First down, they dial up the pass play. But you're not able to get him on the ground. And now they've gotten another first down. And that incomplete pass caused by the big hit on first down, second down coming. Hey, man, if you're going to force incompletions when the QB's thrown to the tight end, you better be physical. Nice job with the hit, forcing that incompletion. The incompletion brings us to second and ten. Gives it to the back on the draw. You want to make sure to maximize those types of runs, and he gets it out to the 41. Draws are such a smart way to take advantage of fast defensive linemen that want to get upfield and get after the quarterback. It keeps them honest, it makes them realize they got to play the run, too. Great play call. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. He gets it oh so close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be a touch short. The Gators decide to punt it away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. And a precision punt there will pin them deep inside their own 10-yard line. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. Comes out throwing on first down. That's caught. It's Thomas. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. Just about any LSU offense will make you hold your breath when they play pitch and catch. Yeah, just such elite playmakers usually. Just such speed. And listen, when you're a defense, speed kills. And LSU, no matter who plays quarterback, they always got dudes that can fly out wide that absolutely scare them. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. We anticipate this one being much tighter than the last time these two met when it was a blowout, David. And here's the thing. you got an opportunity right now. You've got the football early in this game to show you. This is going to be more of the same, Palmer. Well, we talked to both coaching staffs and players, and they're all very aware of what happened the last time these two teams played. So expect everybody's A game today. Reese, you're right. We expect this one to be a lot tighter. LSU with the first and ten here. Quarterback on the keeper. Just working and poking and prodding and finding his way up to the 36. Nice job there by the QB on the zone, Reed, because he's watching the D lineman, and he knows he has to keep the football, and then he right away takes it up field to get some positive points. Went to the running game on first down, now second down. Power football with the run. Turns it on in midfield. He's loose. 
the 20. He rumbles all the way down to the two-yard line. He gave a little bit of everything on that one. This guy strikes fears into the hearts of every defensive coordinator, David, with that speed. If you give this guy any open grass, man, he's gone. It's just silly. Look at the angles, people trying to catch him, but he's got so much juice, he can outrun those angles and make enormous plays. LSU lining up first and goal. Trying to punch it in. And he fights his way forward, gets away from one, but not much doing on that one. That's a great individual play. And I love cornerbacks that don't just take pride in covering guys. I like guys that like to put their face in the fan and affect the running game. This dude is physical, and he impacts the defense because of it. And those guys are really hard to find. A lot of corners, they're smaller. They don't want any part of the physical run game. Nice job sticking his face in there, setting the edge, making the tackle. Well, he gets tackled down at the one-yard line, so offensively, do you feel confident enough on third here trying to hand it off again? Yeah, and I'm taking both these downs, and I'm coming downhill. I'm running the football, trying to get this in the end zone. I only got a yard to go. I got to be physical. They want to power it in on the ground on third and goal. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. That's an outstanding effort by the defense. Backs against the wall. How about the play inside on that defensive line just tunneling down low? They're able to get the stop, and now they set up fourth and one on the goal line. Powers forward, and he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, LSU! When you get down here in the red zone, when you get close to the end zone, and you get goal-to-go situations, you've got to be physical, and I love teams that can run the football. They run the football, hand it to the running back. He does the rest, puts it in the end zone. Lining up to add another. And the extra point makes it 14-0. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. On the run from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Gators sending the offense back to work. David, the putter got some work last time. They'd like to keep him on the sidelines in this drive. Yeah, it's not something you want to say very often. You don't want the putter out there. This offense needs to get back lathered up and get a little bit more of a rhythm. Best way to do that, identify where your best players are and just get them the football. Give these guys some touches to kickstart this offense. play call for that big gain to open the drive. Now here they come on first and ten. They'll run it out of the shotgun. We'll give him a couple on that one. Second and eight coming up. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. After picking up a couple at second and eight, They'll give it to Johnson. Hard running there. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. How about these two running games so far? Dominance on the ground as we look at the first quarter stats. This could be a pivotal moment in this game as we open the second period and they try to find a way to answer. 
on third and long, trying to have a big completion here. And the incomplete pass will bring up fourth down. This offense just has to find a way to find a rhythm here. They're playing at home, and they want this crowd to stay involved and be an asset in the game, but they need to start making plays. They can't keep throwing incompletions this early. The Gators will bring the punt team onto the field. On the return, it's Thomas. They'll get him corralled and down at about the 19-yard line. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. They've jumped on them, executing at a high level and up 14-0, David. This is the exact start you want. I mean, offense is playing great. Defense has gotten stops. You're in a position now, Palmer, to put the hammer down and get a three-possession lead. I'm really impressed with their physicality on both sides of the ball early in this one. They've been winning in the trenches, so here on offense, keep running the football and show your dominance. That last completion sets him up on second down. To the ground with the back. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Well, the offensive line had everybody blocked except the defensive end. He was able to sneak into the backfield and get the tackle for loss. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Looking for a man. It's Nussmeyer. Firing to the right complete. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Really nice job there by the quarterback understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot. Get the ball out of your hands quickly. Make an accurate throw and pick up the first. Well done. He'll keep it himself. They bring him down and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Really, really nice football play. Man, I got to understand option football. I got to play my responsibility, make sure that I know what I'm doing. Look at the linebacker. Great job doing that. Staying patient, getting to the quarterback, making the big tackle. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. He's looking to throw. Catch in the middle. It's Daniels. And he was just a couple of steps away from taking that one even further after the catch. That was a nice pickup running the drag route and finding that quiet soft spot in the zone. Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone too. If you can find the soft spot and the quarterback gets it to him early, he can turn up field and you saw that right there. Quick strike complete. They make the stop, but there is a flag on the field. We'll see what that's all about. That penalty moves the ball back 10 yards. We'll replay the down. LSU moving the ball quickly down the field. He'll do it himself. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And they run the option, and that had no chance. And the QB, you could tell something was a little bit messed up, and he starts to run. It goes nowhere. Defense swarms him. That is the play that we don't want to run. Again. Sixth play of the drive coming up. Dropping back, it's Nussmeyer coming after him. And they got him. He'll get him down for the sack. You want to change some of this bad luck you've had so far around? Get after the quarterback and get his butt on the ground. Nice job by the defense. This game ain't over. It's still the first half. This is a good start. And whatever they did on first and second down, don't do that anymore. Third and very long coming up. Catch in the middle. It's Lacey. Hit the afterburners, kid. And he motors into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. And that's his second receiving touchdown of the game. My man is just finding pay dirt. Tell you what. These are the kind of guys that you continue to feature throughout a game when he can do this kind of damage after he catches the football.
He'll try to tack on one more. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll take the return and try to improve the field position. Pulled down at the 18, and the decision to bring it out of the end zone was not a good one. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. They're down by 21 points, but you get a touchdown here, and you do at least apply a little game pressure, Jesse. It's true. I think for them to get back in this one at this point now, they need the quarterback to play his best football. He's going to have to be good really pre-snap, David, making sure they're in the right looks, and he's got to be really good with his decision making. He's got to be dialed in because defensively you're giving up points. So it's not like you have the luxury of your defense playing great. The offense is going to have to score and score pretty dang quickly. Caught over the middle. It's Badger. Now they've got even more breathing room out to the 31 and a fresh set of downs. Excellent throw by the quarterback. Found the window between the zones and then delivered the ball on time. It's first and 10 from the 31. Use the play fake, now to throw. They're working that left side. Well, it's a nice job, too, of the quarterback after the play fake there, getting his eyes down the field. He had to get that to his tight end quickly, knowing he wasn't going to have a lot of space to run with after the catch. This offense has a second down play. Off the play fake. Quarterback adapting. Picks up the first down and gets down to avoid contact. Most offensive coordinators want to be really aggressive on second and short. And I love the quarterback here. He drops back the pass thinking being aggressive. Nothing available. Scramble. Give me an easy first down. Not the most productive half for this offense so far, but finally starting to get it in gear. First and ten. Hand off to the lone back. Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow. It's second and seven. Yeah, and the running back didn't get much here, but, you know, you clearly want to always establish the tempo, run the football, be consistent, make that defense physically meet the challenge. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. To the air. It's Lagway. Finds a soft spot in the middle. And that is a nifty bit of navigation to get through that traffic and get the first down. That throw and catch, a really good example of why coaches don't want a quarterback to get stuck on a particular target, isn't it, Dave? Yep, that's exactly right. Find the guy who's open because you got so many guys that have so much speed that can do so much damage on the field. Find my matchup, get it to him, let him do the rest. Find his big tight end. They make the stop, but the sweet pulling catch is plenty to give them a first down. Ever since they invented the forward pass, the tight ends have been running the drag and getting the first down. I think it's because the tight ends is so much versatility. You know, they can block and stay in the formation, or they can release and come out. But either way, if the quarterback's patient, most of the time, that drag route's going to come over. Caught in the backfield, it's Johnson. And there is nothing doing on that one. You got the completion and nothing else to show for it. You know, as a quarterback, you believe in your matchup. And, and my running back, if I can get him the ball in space, he's going to win a lot of times. He didn't that time. The defense was ready. Nice job in the open field making the nice tackle. Second down coming up. He's looking to throw, using the quick game. He's brought down quickly, minimal gain there, still a bit short of the first down. I think really good wide receivers do a good job of making every route kind of look the same. You could tell, he, he, this looked like a vertical route. So if I'm a DB, I'm bailing, and all of a sudden, he sits that hitch down. Nice job by the wide receiver, create enough separation to create a positive gain. They make the stop at the two, but he's got enough to give them a first and goal. And on that third and short, I don't think he was unhappy to see that zone. 
Nope, it's a great job by the offense. Hey, see where the holes in the zone are? Sit down. You only need a little bit of yards on this third down. Get the conversion. Move the sticks. And here's the chance to cut into that lead before halftime. First and goal. Receiver on the move gets the touch pass. Touchdown, Florida! And they made it to the house where they found that six points waiting on them. Man, nice job getting the passing game going. This is big, man. Going into the half, and listen, I know you're trailing, but building some momentum. Maybe this second half, we can keep airing the football out, cutting into this deficit, and who knows what the heck will happen. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And after the extra point, they're now down 21 to 7. So a drive there of 82 yards, and it was finished off with a two-yard touchdown toss. They've got it down to a two-touchdown deficit, trailing by 14 and about to kick it away. On the move from inside is five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. They've been the height of efficiency here in the first half, David, and you've got to think they're going to try to click it right down the field here. When you're looking at your playbook and it's worked so well in the first half, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing, Palmer, because it's been all gas. Pollock, that's right. Strike while the iron's hot, too, before this defense gets to go in at halftime to potentially make some adjustments, show you some different looks in the second half. Whatever you've been doing, it's working. Keep it up. To the air. It's Nussmeyer. Pulls it in. And he'll have enough for the first down at the 42. The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. They'll snap this one from the 42. It's first and 10. He's looking to throw it. That's reeled in. It's Durham. At the 35, he's open. Lots of green grass as he gets it to the 31. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play, and you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. LSU getting set on first and 10. He wants to throw. Fires to the wideout. Oh, what a spectacular layout and catch. Well, that's another completion. This quarterback's on fire. I get it. He's thrown for over 200 yards in this game, but it's because he's got people helping him out. How about that incredible job diving out, stretching out, and hauling that pass in? Quarterbacks love it when they don't have to be perfect every time they throw the football. And this group of receivers... Touchdown by you, Bengals! And they take it in for six more points. A score for the big fella here. Why are tight ends so effective in the red zone? Well, these aren't the guys that are going to burn by you and go for 70 most of the time. But when you can use their big body frames, threaten them to run the football and be a blocker in the running game, and now you slip them in the secondary, make that big play. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point is true, and the lead balloons to 21. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they close the deal with a 16-yard throw for the touchdown. Kickoff team lining up to send this one away. And he'll bring it back. Pulled down at the 18, and the decision to bring it out of the end zone was not a good one. So let's see how they play it in this final 30 seconds of the first half. Leaves it with the running back. Really nice run there. Good, solid pickup, and they'll move the sticks with a first down. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. They're getting this guy lathered up, finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. 
They'll use a timeout right before halftime, maybe time for one or two more plays. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and short. Looking to throw, it's Flagway. Just a short pass to the tight end. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half, maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. Just enough time to get off one final play of the half. They'll throw it on first down. Unloads to the wideout. Pass is incomplete, and that's going to do it for the first half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. Talk about a first half from that dude out of the backfield. He's been a total game-changer. And how many top plays moments have we seen on missed tackles alone? Video game moves from one of the shiftiest players in all of college football. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. And the Gators will boot it away to start the second half. He'll bring it back looking for help. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. Going to the run to start this second half. Running hard and getting six yards out to the 26. I know the passing game sells, and the passing game is exciting, but it's not exciting to get five or six yards of pop on the ground, but it will be very successful. Got six on first down, now a lot of options on second and four. Wants to throw, it's Nussmeyer. Or did he find a hole in that secondary? Flying down the left side. Touchdown, Tigers! And the pummeling has started. Now they have extended this lead, guys, starting to put the hammer, but sometimes a rivalry game can give you a little of extra fight back. And there can be no panic at this point now. You've worked too hard this offseason, David. They've had this game circled for so long. You've got to play your best football right now and fight back. And you just need something good to happen on this next possession. You've got to get the crowd back into this football game. Big rivalry. Get some emotion. Get some momentum on your side. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point sails through, and they have a 35-7 lead. You want to see quick strike ability? It was epitomized there. Two plays, 80 yards, touchdown on the board. They're just about ready to kick it away. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. The Gators sending the offense back to work. Moving the running back, forcing the defense to adjust. Grabbed over the middle. It's Badger. The ball's free. The D scoops it up, and everybody reverses field. And he's brought down, and this defense gets the ball back for its own. Well, it's a nice job by him making the catch, but guys, you got to secure the ball and put it away. The play's not over. And give the defender credit for knocking it loose, and the defense jumps on it. Offense set on first down. Quick release on the RPO. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. Now on second down. Back to throw, it's Nussmeyer. They're bringing heat. And a little too much adrenaline on that throw never gave his receiver a chance.
Third and short from the 28. Let's see if this is four down territory or if they just pick up the first here. Off the bootleg and rolling out. Looking left. Got his man downfield. Gets out of bounds after the big play, and they'll be set up in business with a first and goal. Well, I think on that play, you saw why this guy's such a big weapon in this offense. At receiver, he does such a nice job with his routes. He's patient, and he's consistent, and he's got good hands. You don't see him put a lot of balls on the ground. Nice job there picking up the first down. Into the end zone. And that pass intercepted. And defensive backs, you think, don't have good hands. The big fella shows them. How about that defensive back going up and getting the interception? Nice job breaking on the football. You say that's why he played defense, because you don't have hands? Yeah. <laughs> Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. This one feels as if it's starting to get away from them a little bit, Jesse. Yeah, Reese, there's a lot of teams in college football at this point that would just quit. So, David, we're going to find out a lot about this team right now. And the freshman will chalk up a sack. What a great play by the defensive tackle. Look, sacks aren't just for very athletic, long defensive ends. These D tackles, man, they use their strength. They push Lyman back in the pocket, collapse it, and come away with the sack. We'll see if they can dial up one that works this time on second down from the 14. Back to pass. It's Lagway. Zings it complete to the right. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down marker. And you see so many smart wide receivers, so many smart tight ends nowadays that they know where the holes in those zones are and they work with their quarterback and they find them and they sit down in them and make big plays. It's tough to sit back in zone against such smart players nowadays. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Well, after struggling so much in the first half, you thought they would have made some adjustments here at halftime to see if they can open up this passing game. But early on in the second half, you're just not really able to get that done. Incompletion on third down in your own end, you're expecting them to punt. The Gators will try to pin them back with the punt. He's getting a lot of work. Fourth time he's punted tonight. He's got great speed. Looking for running room, he'll get it to the 43-yard line before he stops. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Working on the right. Tackled after picking up the first down. Yeah, and Palmer, I don't know what his grade's going to be, but hitting over 400 yards on the day, I, I think coaches are going to be pretty impressed with the day this young man had. No doubt. I think for defensive coordinators moving forward now, you're going to be charged with having to find answers to try to slow this guy down. Today, we've seen this defense try blitzing, zone coverage, man coverage. They've mixed up personnel. None of it has worked. This guy has carved them apart. It's really easy to say the word RPO and say I'm going to run them, but you got to make those decisions and you got to make them fast. You can't get confused by all the craziness that's going on, by all the guys moving around or talking. Nice job by the quarterback staying in the moment, seeing it. A shot for the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! And the stomping has commenced. And that's what I love about empty sets and formations on offense is that when you spread the defense out, you create bigger lanes to throw and do. You saw it right there. Lining up for the PAT. And with that extra point, the lead remains in the gargantuan category. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they get it into the end zone on a 36-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team out there getting set. He'll take the return, try to get better field position. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Gators sending the offense back to work. 
That last drive won't go on the highlight reel after ending in a punt. They'd like to be more productive this time, David. And I think this offense has to be a little bit more balanced. Find a little balance between the run, Jesse, and working in that pass. And I think, too, David, it's just going to take a spark. It just takes one play to get this thing picked up and going. This offense set up with a second and short. Grabbed in the middle. It's Hanson. Tackle is made after the first down. Well, they pick up the first against zone coverage. The biggest key there is the quarterback understanding that A, it's zone, but B, what kind of zone is it? Is it one high safety? Is it two high safeties? And then you know instinctively where your best throw, where your highest percentage completion is based on what type of zone coverage it's going to be. Just working and poking and prodding and finding his way up to the 36. Keep pounding away at this defense and make them play the run. If you can get this many a chunk, they're going to have to commit more guys to the box, more guys to the run. Then you open it up for the passing game. They can really be aggressive after that last play at second and three. Off the boot, looking for his man. Finds his tight end. And he gets it to the 45-yard line, and that'll be a first down. These routes have some reads and adaptability built in, and the big fella found that cushion and made the play. Man, it's so awesome how much offenses have evolved. They know exactly what they're getting, where to sit down, quarterback, tight end, on the same page, gets the first down. On the ground with the counter. Oh, he's so hard to get on the ground. He's got room. He got a bunch and looked close to getting a lot more, but he's got the first down. Well, no surprise. I mean, with the way they're running the ball early in this game, they're just going to keep doing it. And they're just not hammering out two, three, four-yard gains. They're gashing this defense. You saw it right there. The Gators will line it up on first and ten. Looking to move it through the air. Grab behind the line. It's Badger. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. It's hard to have success on wide receiver screens when you're facing press man coverage because your blockers out front oftentimes can't pick them up, and that receiver gets gobbled up as soon as he catches the pass. You saw it on that last play. And here comes play number six of the drive. The handoff to Johnson. Not much room to run. Let's give him one to the 33. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. And those guys, those running backs coming, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. On third down, going up top, using his feet to buy time. Quarterback tried to scramble around for a while, but the defense able to bring him down. Well, that defender just was better in his one-on-one -on, -one on the pass rush. He does a great job beating the offensive lineman to get to the QB. And the Gators will punt it away on fourth down. They may have to pay him overtime. He's punting for the fifth time today. He'll get away another punt. He's been really active today, and no doubt he's going to earn his varsity ladder. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. He'll start this drive firing. Throws to the wideout. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. the misfire now on second down. Hands it off. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Yeah, and listen, the offense has had their way, and they've had so much success and so much production, but listen, at least the defense got a rep. You know, maybe this gets you some a spark. Maybe this gets you some energy. Maybe we'll see a little bit more life from this defense. Yeah, they may not win the game, but I think this defensive coaching staff at this point, based on how this game has gone, they're just trying to find things to build off of. And maybe that's something they can point to as they get ready for their next opponent of things they did right, things that they got to do more consistently moving forward. 
defense has been looking so good on this drive so far. They already set up third and long, and now they take all the throws away down the field. Great job in coverage. Great job reading the QB's eyes. So there's nowhere for him to go with it. He's got to throw it away. That is coverage just the way you draw it up. Don't even let him get started, and they knock him down deep in his own end. A first down run in the red zone. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, he did everything he could to try to avoid all those defenders, but at the end, it's still a negative play. Tackle for loss. One defender, then the next one. The blitzing guy got a shot at him. Everybody had a shot. It took a while to get him down. Yeah, great effort by that defense. Not quitting on the play. Looking to throw a flag wave. He caught it. And to the end zone. Touchdown, Gator! The offense did exactly what it needed to do, getting the ball in field position like that. It's that killer mentality. You step on their throat, you keep your foot down. When you get opportunities like that, they are golden chances to put touchdowns on the board. The offense took care of business. Getting set for the point after. Right down the boulevard. They didn't have a whole lot of real estate in front of them when they took over possession, but they wasted no time. Couple of plays into the end zone. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll bring it out. It's Thomas. He's brought down at the 16, would have been much better off to take the touchback. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. They'll have another opportunity to extend this lead after punting last time, David. And it's important to put that punt behind you. It's, it's over. Let it go. Get back to what you were doing that built this lead, Paul. Yeah, and defense, obviously, they won a few downs uh, that last drive. So we got to put them on their heels here. Maybe mix up a few personnel groupings and try to show them some pictures they haven't seen yet. They'll start this one from the 29 on first down. Going to run it. It's Durham. Defense there to stop him after a two-yard gain to the 31. Guys, LSU has the lead here. This has been a complete obliteration so far as the third quarter stats will show you. So will the beatdown continue or is this a comeback for the ages in store? We'll see as we start the fourth. They're looking for an advantage to the right. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Well, they're trying to run the football there, just nowhere to go. They got dominated up front at the point of attack. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. On third and long, he has to throw for it. The sure hands, it's Daniels. That defense got gashed, but they finally get him to the turf at the 47. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. LSU moving quickly, going to work again on first down. Now they'll run it to the right here. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck. No holes anywhere. They got nothing on the last play at second and ten. The play action fake. Throws for the tight end. Got him downfield. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. 
Well, I love play callers that want to stay aggressive, regardless of what the score is, regardless of how much time is left on the clock. And I promise you this, there are a lot of fans, there are a lot of teams all across college football that are paying attention to what is happening right now. And the Tigers have it with a first and ten. They'll throw it from the red zone. He's got it. Oh, and he thought he might be able to wiggle his way into the end zone, but they knock him down at the three. Always nice to have that security blanket of the tight end. And it's nice to have a tight end that can line up in different areas of the field, too. It's not always going to be in a three-point stance. He can sometimes be in the backfield. You can flex him out into the slot. They might even try to put this guy out at wide receiver in the split end position. Touchdown, LSU! And the beatdown has ensued. And this always is the debate of where you fall. It's your job to stop me or I should get concerned because this offense obviously has had themselves a day. And apparently, their day's not over. They're going to continue to keep scoring, and the defense better do something about it. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point just tacks a little bit more onto this huge lead. So an 82-yard drive there. And close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. They're lining up to boot it away. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Got his man all by himself. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. And these quarterbacks have to really trust their wide receivers that they're going to be disciplined and run to the right route when they're throwing that ball to the outside like that because those corners are sitting there on the inside, and the worst thing that could happen is to miss inside and that cornerback get going the other direction. They'll throw it on first down. He'll off one deep down the left side. And that one's incomplete. Worth taking a shot there, but couldn't hook up. Well, trailing this much in the fourth quarter, the offense is looking for an explosive play to try to ignite them and get them back in this one, but nothing doing. Nice job in coverage. The incompletion on first down leaves him with second and 10 from the 43. Dropping back, it's Lagway. Just had to get rid of that one. Good job to avoid the loss. At this point in the game in the fourth quarter, it is going to be tough for this offense to get some completions here because now, trailing by this much, the defense is expecting pass and they're putting a whole bunch of extra DBs on the field to help them out in coverage. Boy, guys, they got off to a great start with that big first play on this drive, but now a couple of incompletions leaves them in a hole. Find his man down the middle. You just get the feeling this defense is going to make it hard on them, right? They've got the lead. It's late, and they're going to try to tackle everybody inbounds. Offense is going to have to really work for this and be smart. you got to attack the sidelines. you got to throw first downs. you got to keep this thing moving vertically down the field. The Gators will send out the punt unit. And these guys have been busy. Sixth punt of the day. He'll aim it toward the sideline to try to make it tough on the return team. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. How about that last drive? Just carved him up in the air, David. Yeah, and how about that quarterback? You gave him the ball. And Running toward the tape. And chunk plays are the name of the game. And they get one here before the defense finally makes the stop. And obviously this offense has had their way getting the huge lead. And now when you know it's a running situation later in the ball games, you're still getting pounded. This defense has to step up at some point and be a lot more physical. D coordinators down the road that have to play this offense, man, they're going to have nightmares because this unit has so much speed. And, so and he breaks into the open. Ripped off a huge chunk play on that one as he gets the first down before he steps out of bounds. Yeah, and this offense has had their way with this defense, and they've had a lot of success. And I tell you what, if this defense wants any chance of coming back, they better get physical and stop the run, because right now, this offense is having their way. 
They made the defense pay with that last big chunk of yardage. Now first and 10 from the 30. Fires to the wideout. Makes the grab. Touchdown, LSU! And the route is on. Points, points, and more points. This offense has had their way. They just keep their foot on the gas, keep putting up points, keep putting up touchdowns. And you know what? This is one of those stats days. You look back and you're like, that guy had 12 touchdowns on the year. Well, four or five of them might have been in this game. On to attempt to try. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they finish it up with the final 30 yards coming courtesy of that touchdown pass. Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. Oh, picked off. No good place for a turnover, but this one is particularly bad, and they've got it at the 20-yard line. And as a defensive lineman late in the game, man, when you know it's passed, you're pinning your ears back, trying to get to the quarterback, and DBs are trying to do this. Pad them stats, get the INT. Nice job by this D. And we'll see the offense make its way onto the field here, hoping for a successful drive. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. With the catch, it's Lacey. Touchdown, Tigers! And the punishment has been extended. How about the day for this young fellow? That's a four-game stretch. Nope, four touchdowns in one game. He has been the focal point of this offense, and he has not disappointed. Ready to try the point after. And with the extra point, the lead is even bigger. That's taking advantage of a golden opportunity set up with great field position, and they struck quickly for the touchdown. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. And he takes this from inside the five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Well, the good news about this drive, Jesse, it can't go worse than fires one high and deep. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge gain in his fingers, and he couldn't hold on. This defense has just been all over this guy all game long, under pressure. They're finding a way to get to him and affect his rhythm. Of course, they have an interception in this game. That's why they've got a big lead here in the fourth quarter. This guy has never gotten into a rhythm. To the air, it's Flagway. Right down the middle. It's caught. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. Yeah, and David, you just wonder at this point, is it just too little too late? This is one of their best playmakers offensively, but they just haven't been able to get him going in this game. Big reason why they're losing. Yeah, and the defense has done a great job understanding that. I got to take that guy away. That's priority number one. Understand it. Late in the game now, up by multiple scores. I'm playing my defense a little bit different. Can't give up the big plays. Time is on my side. Awesome body control and great job, too, knowing where he is on the field to make sure he got his feet down in bounds. At this point, this guy's been open all over the field, and if I'm the QB, man, I keep throwing him the ball. The Gators have it with a first and ten. He's going to pass. He's got an open man. Racing to the right. Touchdown, Florida! 
And once he found open space, the band might as well start playing. And this has been a rough day for this offense. And finally, some good things to happen. Build some momentum maybe for the future. You know, that's, that's the way the coaches spin it when you're getting beat up and you're getting destroyed. Like, listen, let's, let's find something for the future. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep working. This team's done that. Put some points on the board. So it's not all bad. PAT unit on the field. Splits the uprights. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And the capper coming on that 48-yard touchdown dart. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. Fielded in the end zone, it's Thomas. That gamble did not pay off as they bring him down at the 12-yard line. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. This offense has really been clicking in the game so far, Jesse. No doubt. Everything their play caller is dialing up, these guys offensively have been able to go out and execute them. Yeah, and it's just maintaining the lead. Keep doing what you've been doing. You got a big lead. Let's just keep piling it on until they find an answer. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. The give as they work on that clock. Across the 25, he's got room. A huge pickup on the play before he goes out of bounds, but the question is, will it stand? There is a penalty marker on the field. Amazing how many times an offensive holding penalty will stall a drive. We'll see if the offense can overcome it. They go to the ground. Gives them some room to operate as he rumbles ahead for six out to the 15-yard line. And a nice job by the running back finding space, getting downhill, making the good run. Great job finishing with his pads. Now facing a third and long. We've reached a two-minute warning, and this offense will be quite content just to drain the rest of the time away. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third down, he drops the throw. Gets it out quickly. Really nice job there by both guys to throw and the catch to work that defense and get the first down. He has been the go-to guy on offense all game long. And on a critical third down here in the fourth quarter, surprise, surprise, guess who they go to? That guy. And they'll line up from the 31 on first down. The give to the running back from the shotgun. So runs like that that can really help your field position as they're up at the 35. And I'm a fan of this, man. Run the football, keep the clock. We got the lead. This offense has put together a nice day, man. Like, just balance, rhythm, timing, play calling. Everything has worked. That's why they built this lead. They've had a great day today. Leaves it with the back. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. And the defense is still fighting. They, they haven't had the day that they dreamed of. But, you know, talking to the coaches coming to the game, like, they thought they had a good plan. They'd be ready to attack and, and, and limit some of the damage this offense has done. They haven't done it today, though. they got to go back to the drawing board, figure some things out, because this wasn't a great day. Handoff to the lone back. He breaks a tackle. And that will be the final play as the clock strikes zero here. 